Jay here from Stratford Paddock. This is Paddock Live, and joining me is my old mucker, Callum Stone. How are you doing, bro? I'm all right, mate. As good as I can be. Yeah. As usual. Not after a 7 1 win for Liverpool, unless it was 8 1. I don't know what it finished. It's 7 1, man. It was weird. We were watching it here, and I said to Ronnie, I said, um, it was 1 0 to Rangers. I think I said, if, they, if, if Liverpool equalise, I can see him winning 6 1. Like, I can see him just because the Rangers were all over the gaff. Well, that's you know, tough. Like, kept giving the ball away. Well. But they'll, they'll turn him over, and I was. Being slightly kind, because, well, yeah. I left the house and it was 1-0, so... 1-0, yeah. I left the house at 1-0, so freaking hell, I God mean, knows how that happened. I thought Rangers were playing them off the park when I left, but apparently things happen when you don't watch football. It's annoying to see them football, but I'm not really bothered anyway. And plus, no one cares about the Champions League anyway. Oh, yeah, Thursday night, so when it's really hard. Exactly, it? well said. Uh, we've got loads of stories to get through. We're going to be talking about the Glazers, obviously. Glazers, hashtag Glazers out. Apparently they've set in their price, but I think they're living in Cloud Cookie Land. We'll get into that. We're going to be talking about that potential Ronaldo ban. He's seen him smacking that phone last season. Fair play to him. I know I thought that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I ate all the compo face thing as well, you know, with a mum and the kid like... Mm. Oh, well, didn't they sell that story to the son as well? They seem to only have morals when it suits them, don't they? Yeah, you know I mean? That's horrible, that. Um, and then the picture of his bruised hand, which I think she's got him home and just... Oh, she's probably just whacked him with a belt like, like yeah. probably deserved and then oh, gone, oh, yeah, let's use that. Let's get, get, let's get your hand blue. Um, right, so we'll get into that anyway and see what's going to be happening with that. Also, a couple of transfer stories, and we'll be hearing from the last fan standing lot, Adam McCall, talking to Bet Victor. So make sure you're getting involved in the chat and the comments. Thanks for everyone who's been patient. Uh, Santa Notch says Barca Vienna was better. Yeah, we should have watched that. How did that finish, Santa? Um, how did it finish? How did Barca Vienna finish? Was it 2 all? 3 3 2, I think it finished, didn't it? What, to Barca? Inter, I believe. Do you know what? I don't know. I, I, Following the group chat before, I think someone scored a third goal, but I don't know if it finished 3 2. 3 all? 3 all. What does there that mean? Go. Is that Barca out of the Champions League now, then? I think they've got Sorry, a bit I've been to trying do, to they? prepare for this. Um, yeah, let us know. Um, That's why we're late. Everyone's saying 3 all. Oh, 3 all in his argument. So, oh, what does that mean? Is that Barcelona into the Europa? Get involved in the chat in the comments and let you, us know. You know for a fact that's me. That's United versus Barcelona in the last 32, don't you? I it's hope. just going to happen, isn't it? I you just so. know. Yeah, that's like, we'll just pretend it's the Champions League. Well, yeah, exactly. Can we just well, put, yeah. take your headphones and play the Champions League music when you go? It'll still be... Just pretend <laughs> pretend <laughs> yeah. we're in the Champions League, do you know what I mean? Like, yes, this is the Champions League quarters. Yeah, you may no, as well. well no, or, or final or whatever you want to do, and then it's not really. It's the last 32, but let's not pretend that. Oh, yeah, Steve Cal uh, Calgary says the three points behind two games left so they can I think they're still in a chance uh, anyway right should we get into the Glazers this is the latest story in the the Glazers saga uh, you can see there Glazers set price when you see that you get I, I don't know about you I get a little bit excited but then when you scratch beneath the surface it just seems a bit stupid uh, the Glazers name their price which would make Man United the most valuable sports team in the world the Glazers would consider selling Manchester United if a bid was made in excess of a staggering 10 billion quid the revelation comes after Britain's richest man, Jim Ratcliffe, revealed he held talks with his brothers, oh, sorry, with brothers, Joel and Avram Glazer, about buying United, but was told the family didn't want to sell. Yeah, I watched that yesterday. Jim uh, Ratcliffe speaking to Jonathan Guthrie at the Financial Times, did like a live q and I was waiting for the United question. It did come up. He said that the United is not for sale. He called Joel and Avram uh, nice people, but I think he was being kind to them, to say the least, because they're not nice people, the dickheads. Um, and he said Put that, it bluntly, why don't Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and he said um, that had United been available in the summer, they would have given it a go. I mean, this shit, 10 billion quid, it's nonsense, isn't it? It's basically like when Benfica sold Liverpool 100 million quid for Nunes, and then they went, yeah, go on then. Yeah. It's a ridiculous price. Considering the state of United at the minute, and obviously, the, well, on and off the pitch, but... The debt that we're in, the, the decay of the stadium, the training ground, 10 billion is just unheard of. And it's not going to happen, is it? But no. I get the, the overstating the price to put potential suitors off. But I think if 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 the if if the price was right, I think I think they probably would sell at this yeah. point. I think the pressure that fans seem to be putting under from various different groups across the fan base, there's no reason why they shouldn't sell. Uh, obviously, I'm speaking from a bias because I want them gone as well. But with Ratcliffe being a United fan, as he mentioned last night, and obviously I know he's, he seems to be really... He, he basically wants a football club from wherever. It seems to be a case that he wants a Premier League club the most. Why not buy United? I know obviously he looked at Chelsea, in the, I think it was just before the summer window, wasn't it? Yeah. But it seems to be the most suitable for, for him to buy United. You know, he's a United fan. There's a lot of pressure on the Glazers. The fans don't want him there. There's a lot of problems with the club on and off the pitch. It just makes sense for him to just go for the club he supports. Hopefully he does. I don't see the... 
that I know he's called them a, ni a nice pair of people. I'd, pull, I'd call them a nice pair of twats, to be honest. But I think uh, at this point, you may, as well, you may as well just test the waters, put a bid in, see, see how it goes. I'm not really, I don't really tend to deal a lot with billion pound uh, deals because I'm skint. But we'll see. We'll, I don't see why he doesn't just test it and see see what they do. Because I think if if the right bid came in, I don't see why they shouldn't. They wouldn't sell at this point. Yeah, we know right? the thing with the Glazers is like obviously they've taken hundreds of millions of pounds in dividends. It's a cash cow through. The question is, does it get to the point where if they were to sell, they'd get more money than if they kept it? Do you know what I mean? That's well, the <laughs> that's the obvious question in it because they're not in it for anything other than money. So is it better better for them to sell? Or will they make more keeping it? I think it depends on what they sell it for, obviously, but they seem to be making a certain amount every year through the money that they're taking out of the club. You know, it wouldn't happen in any other business across across the world. It doesn't have to be football. If it was anything else, most businesses that operate within profit do tend to pay shareholders dividends. You know, we've seen it across Royal Mail and uh, Network Rail, obviously with the strikes that have been it, fair play to them. But, you know, with the profit that these companies are making, dividends are being put out to the shareholders. These are taking money out when United are making record losses. It's yeah. ridiculous. They took a loan, didn't they, for dividends they, last they, time? They took a loan for dividends. Which is unheard of. You know, the, the, the amount of money that... I think over the last, is it 10 years, I think they've taken close to half a billion quid in dividends yeah, alone. Yeah, I think it's 400 million. 400 dividends. million, something yeah, like that. Right. The, the money that they're taking out of the club is staggering and it wouldn't be allowed to happen in any other business. Yet it seems to be allowed in football and when it's Manchester United. If this was to happen now when a, 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 a set of potential owners came into a club and tried to buy a club now the way these have, it wouldn't be allowed. But it's not. Did you it's, remember the Glazer rule that came the, the, the in The Glazer rule that came Chelsea. in for, for Chelsea. They yeah, actually it, brought a rule in to stop clubs or owners, sorry, potential owners, buying a club the way the Glazers bought United, but obviously it's fucking 17 years too well, late Well, yeah, well, the, the problem is, though, it, you know, I feel like as soon as the London club came about with this, you know, rules were brought in to stop it happening. This rule should have never been allowed back in 2005, and the fact that it was, you know, and these ideas that United never processed it when we were winning things, that's it's just bollocks. a it's complete nonsense, and the people that are saying it are just complete ignorant to what's going on. They just clearly want to gauge a reaction from United fans because they know the talking nonsense. Effectively, at this point, what Man United fans need to do is a, a lot of people will disagree with how the clubs run or the manager or the players or whatever, but I think everyone needs to come together at this point and go, right, we need to get these owners out. And if Ratcliffe is the best option, fine. Uh, personally, I wouldn't ever want to see a Saudi buyout or, or an Abu Dhabi buyout, anything like that. Um, and to be honest, even if Jim Ratcliffe was to come in, there still needs to be some kind of check and research and due diligence, uh, due diligence on him. Because we can't just go, oh, well, it's, it's not the Glazers. Sometimes you do need to do your research. But at this point, it does seem to be the best option, especially with him being a United fan. Um, I, I didn't particularly agree with the fact that he said the nice guys. Um, I, I don't particularly agree with people that take money out of a club that's losing money and... And calling them nice guys, I think. I that's think, a ridiculous. to be fair, I think, I, I, I think, I, I think like, was, you know, I suppose I, he's got a safe face a little bit. I understand that, but as, a, as if he, he is going to buy something off him, you think he'd want to have a relationship with him? Well, so yeah, I, get I, get, I don't I agree with that. I do think maybe. I think if he'd have sat there and gone, they're twats. I fucking hate them. He's going to. No, yeah, do you I know get what that. I mean? I think, the thing is, I, I don't know if I was put off by that interview or more put on with it because. He he didn't do anything wrong, really. It, I mean, it was annoying that he said that. I get what you're saying, though, but, you know, it's at this point... It's... I'll be honest, I didn't really care what he said about them, like that. Do you no, know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's what I mean. I, I think he, he, I, I, wonder, I wonder if that was the case of he was just trying to keep some kind of relationship in case they do become available. Because if United are available, I do reckon they'll be the first person in the ring to go, I want them, sell them to me. Yeah, like, like Santa Knox has come, come on, I don't, you know, Jim Man, I really think that. I didn't look, look too much into that. I just no, thought, I think it was just a case. Yeah. I mean, as, a, as a fan, it would have been annoying. a bit weird. It's if he'd gone, it, if he'd gone meant oh, it. I think the Glazers are horrible. And then, and then people would have gone, well, that's not going to help you if you do want to buy United. At least he's got some sort of relationship. I think that's the difference, that. though. He's clearly got some kind of media training, because if it was me who was the billionaire on there, I probably would have called them twats. But yeah, well, he's, I'm, he's I'm a businessman, and if he does want to buy Manchester United, he's going to have to deal with the Glazers. Yeah, well, I'm not, not, he's not... He might be a lot of things, but he ain't stupid. Yeah, um, get involved yeah. in the comments in the chat and let us know what you think. Ten billion quid's obviously too much. I think it's going to be closer to sort of 4.5 or something, 5 billion. The fact Chelsea went for what they went, I think, set a little bit of a precedent on it, really. And I reckon that's around what United would go for. Considering the succession that Chelsea have had over the last 10, 15 years, I, I still think that I was surprised they went for that much, if I'm honest. Because um, I thought United probably would have been worth that. And then Chelsea maybe about two or three. But it set a bit of a precedent. And I reckon if United was to be sold, that's around maybe four or five, something like that.
Uh, talk of you in the chat says the sale of United in the current circumstances, circumstances will be, be a very hush hush deal early on until prices agreed and timeline for handover. Um, Sa Saad Maskud or Maxud, sorry, says he also said he isn't waiting around, so I'm sure he will move, move on if Glazers don't sell the next year or so. I mean, you can look into that interview any way you can. At least he's you know being asked a question, I suppose, and it has come up. We had Mark Ogden on, and he was saying that. One thing you got to remember is you see when like obviously Ratcliffe himself went for Chelsea. When Chelsea became available, loads of offers came in. Yeah, and loads of like groups came in. Do you know what I mean? And I think Todd Burley, to be fair, is a consortium. He's just ahead of it. And I wouldn't be surprised that happened with United if it did become available, where you have all these groups all of a sudden that pop up because if there was what there was dozens of bids for Chelsea. I'd expect the same for Manchester United. No, I, mean, I get this bias here, but I mean United obviously. I personally still think they're bigger than Chelsea, of course. Of course, they are, but of course. No, they're, they're still one of the biggest opinion, clubs in no. the world, if not the biggest. So if, if that amount of interest was generated for Chelsea, there's no way United wouldn't generate no. more. You know, 100%. United did get so much more interest from who, however many groups and consortiums. So it, it does fill me with a little bit of confidence knowing Chelsea were so wanted, because the idea of being that rich and owning Man United, sure, there's got to be something. I mean, if. I'm sure. I'm sure it's quite a, a valuable, prestigious thing to be able to say amongst that. So, I, you know, if the Glazers ever said it was available, you know, they're, they're not going to say, "Oh, yeah, it's available for two billion or three billion. They're going to absolutely maximise the price. And the fact that this story has come out the day after this, I mean, I take it with a pinch of salt with the Daily Star, obviously, but it, it's a start at least. Um, anyway, let us know what you think. Hopefully, the Glazers will be gone soon. But the process is set to continue. I think there's another one planned by the 1958 group for the Newcastle games to keep, keep around socials for that one. Uh, let's move on to we talk about, is it Bet Victor next? Yeah. yeah, we've got a video from Bet Victor, Adam McCullough and the gang at Last Fan Standing. This is where all the rival fans chat about top four and about managers and all that sort of stuff. Let's check out what he had to say. Paul, let's, can I just get your predictions now a quarter of the way through the season? Who will finish in those third and fourth places? Uh, Liverpool and... Ooh... That's a great question. Che Chelsea, Potter Chelsea. playing well, is it Chelsea? Che yeah, Chelsea. Boovy, who do you think? Uh, Arsenal and Chelsea for me. Well, who will be the top two then? Uh, Man City and Liverpool. Right, brilliant. Spurs not even in. Okay, and... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Lee? <laughs> Lee, if Arsenal and Man City are one and two, who's three and four? Uh, I, I think Liverpool still. I, I still think that they're getting it. I, don't, I think that they'll get there. And I, I, I hate to say it. Hate to say it. I think that uh, Tottenham will just sneak in at full flight now. I've, I'm not too. I'm, I'm watching Chelsea, and I'm. I'm I don't know about. I'm not criticising them at all, but I don't know. I just think that something's not quite right. Man United. I don't think you can write out Man United. Write off Man United, by the way, with the players they got. But they look a bit bitty. But I just think that Spurs. Just because they've got that solid foundation of what they've got, I think we'll get we'll get in there as well. Oh, you lost two games since April. Don't know if that's important. Sounds good to me. So that was the guys on Bet Victor and Last Fan Standing talking about the top four. Make sure you go and visit them at Last Fan Standing and let them know whether you think Manchester United are going to finish in the top four. Say Stretford Paddock sent you. Uh, it's a bit of a hot topic. This is also being discussed on the overlap. There's a video on our channel as well on the overlap about, uh, from the overlap, sorry, uh, with Maka and a few other fans as well. And we saw the rival fans, Boovy and the gang there, talking about Manchester United's chance as well. Not really about Manchester United. They're no, saying everyone really but Manchester United in the top four. Uh, so make sure you check out that with Last Fan standing what do you think about top four do you think United will do this season yeah I think I, I think if we if we keep up this little bit of fun we've managed to find under Ten Hag if we could, I mean obviously the City game last week was a bit of a bit of a disappointment the City were just out of this world really weren't they so I don't really count that I think we found a little bit of form beforehand obviously then the, the Queen died and um, we had a bit of a break uh, I think United will get top four I, I don't know it's really hard to call though at the minute I think City have got first obviously I still I still just have this feeling that Arsenal might drop off. I think that's just maybe, maybe that's just the way they've been the past few years. I mean, they've been very good, but I just have this feeling they'll drop off. I don't. I think Liverpool are in a lot of trouble this season. Um, I, I think the transfer window they had this this year was really poor. Um, I could poss possibly see City, Tottenham, maybe Arsenal, then United. 
Chelsea possibly challenging for the fourth spot with United, I think. I think Potter's, Potter going in there will do them really good. Uh, but obviously, as a United fan, I want United in fourth, not Chelsea. So um, I reckon Chelsea might might push us all the way, but I reckon we'll be all right. What do you yeah. reckon? You reckon we'll go for it or what? I just worry about injuries. I think we're two, two or three injuries away from being in all sorts of trouble. Um, I, I like Tanaga, I like what he's doing. Um, it's still the start of that whole project, though, isn't it? So yeah. like, I, I get that there's that worry, isn't there? I, top four is obviously vital in terms of finances and that in it, but I reckon, I reckon we might just get there. But it, it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be the a weird, slog. The weird end. thing is, right? I think we could actually finish six and there'll be progress. Yeah, no, I reckon. I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, progress, six it's... looks like disaster. That's why we finished last season was horrible. But we could do that this season because you've got five good teams above you, and you could actually say, you know what? Despite the fact, I'm not saying we will, but I'm saying despite the fact we finished six, there has been progress. I think a lot of obviously depends well, you, what it does you, in the cups. You, you could argue we we were lucky to finish sixth at the end of last season. How poor we were. So you know, sixth is sixth and better playing football, a team looking more together, uh, structure on uh, you know off the pitch. It, there would be progress clearly. I mean, it, it's not where we want to be, but it is a start of the projects, and I get that. Uh, I, st I reckon if we're going to get fourth this year, I reckon it is doable, but it wouldn't. Be the end of the world. I, I could see us. I could see us doing it, but I think Chelsea really will push us. Push us. Um, make sure you go and check out Last Fan Standing, Bet Victor. Don't forget to comment from Stratford Paddock as well. Uh, let's talk about Ronaldo upsetting children in Merseyside. Uh, this Fair is this. Uh, Ronaldo could face ban. United are concerned Ronaldo will face a multi game ban over phone incident at uh, Everton. This was from last season, obviously. Uh, despite Eric Ten Hag stating that Ronaldo will not accept the FA's improper and or violent conduct charge, Ronaldo has since accepted it. Ronaldo received a police caution after he knocked a phone out of a fan's hands in an incident following a 1 0 defeat by Everton at Goodison and that's come from the BBC Sport and from the Manchester Evening News and basically every paper in the land uh, all reporting on it if you've not seen it he was going down a tunnel kid's got his phone out Ronaldo smacks his hand knocks the phone he did a bit of an Instagram post then the kid's family did all these sort of media rounds and said it's not good enough they, you know, they don't accept his apology that he gave and all this other stuff um, bit of a compo face, you know, the usual, like, oh, he's, he's been traumatised, and he's, you know, and he's not well, he's got issues as well, and now he's, every time he goes to use his phone, he just sees Ronaldo smacking his hand, and he's, you know, he's been wet in the bed at night, and he can't you know sleep, I, and it's all Ronaldo's fault, and I think if I got a few quid, everything would be alright. I'd never wash my hand again. Oh, he can, he can get stuffed, honestly. What are you on about? Oh, he can't go on his phone. God, I, go I made that bit up, I don't know if he did say that, but it was that kind of thing. No, I, was, I'm yeah. sure I read it was that. Like, well. it, it was like, every time he's traumatised when he goes on his like, phone. Oh. When, he's, when he ever goes on it, if anyone says phone, if anyone says the word phone near him, he starts crying. I wouldn't like, actually be surprised. You know I mean? It's not like Scousers 12 or exaggerate things, is it? Oh, get a grip, you complete <laughs> tit, honestly. <laughs> He said something when I'm like the, the more the more moderate person on this uh, on this channel, but yeah, it just seems like oh, it's, it's all a bit of compo face nonsense, doesn't it? It's and listen, so ridiculous, man. Do you like, know what? If you're gonna start putting your phone near an elbow, don't kick off if you smash it out of your hand. That's all I say. Um, right, let's move on anyway because I'm already done with this. We'll wait and see what happens with the charges and with the ban, and if he does get banned from games, a bit annoying if he does. A multi game ban would be ridiculous. Him. If he gets banned for a game, fine. He doesn't start every game anyway, does he? And if Marshall's fit, we'll probably he'll end up starting anyway. So it's not the biggest deal in the world, <laughs> I guess. Um, DB Cube says Jay would let Ronaldo break his phone. I'd let Ronaldo break my phone anytime. I'd right, like, I'd let him break my face. There you go, like, then you see Callum Stone says uh, he'd let he'd let Ronaldo break his face. Um, the low contract situation, should we move on to this? I think we've got a graphic for it, have we? Uh, yeah. Should, can we have it? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we are. Hey? Um, the low could leave United very um Dramatic statement there. Uh, Diogo Delo looking for a new club as Man United may be forced into two new signings. Goes on to say, Delo is reportedly looking around for a new club with his agent. Delo's potential exit could lead to Eric Ten Hag being forced into making two right-back signings. Delo is out of contract at United at the end of the season. However, the Red Devils have an option to extend his deal for another year. There are reports that United are now formally pursuing Delo to sign new contracts. That's come from the Express. Yeah, he, we know he's out of contract in the summer and that United could trigger that extra year. I think we're destined to... Yeah, well, I think it's going to happen. I mean, he's, he's found a lot of form and fair play to the guy. He's worked hard to get into United's team and it seems to be working well for him at a minute. I still think there's a, little, a few weaknesses in his game personally, but this, he's definitely deserved to have his contract extended. Um, it does seem a little bit of agent talk and, you know, death and gloom and all that, but Delo could leave United. I mean, we've, got that, we've got that option for 2024 and I reckon they'll probably look at pursuing it to go even further than that. Um, 
So yeah, I'd, he's done well. Fair play to him. He's, he's come back into the side. The, the loans have obviously done him well. He didn't look it. He didn't look brilliant under Ralph last season. But then again, nobody did. Did they? I reckon I could have done a job at right back it under that bloody under that manager to be honest. Um, but yeah, fair play to him. He's done all right, and I can see that. I mean, is it one of those options where you just trigger it? It's not like mm. a you don't have to negotiate or anything. I think, so. I think that's going. I think that's bound to happen in the next however many months, um, and it's fairly deserved really. I, I reckon if he keeps it up, they'll be looking at doing it even longer really won't they I like Delo I think he's a good kid I think he's having a good season and I think it's a bit of a no-brainer because even if you're going to bring in another right back you still need options um, and you know you're finally getting a tune out of him so give him a contract extension he's not on silly money as well Delo some players are on ridiculous money he isn't one of them do, do you know what though people are going to call me ridiculous for this but I really liked Juan Bissaka I felt like he could have been really good under Ten Hag I think I know he needed to improve massively attacking wise but he was, I thought he was very good defensively, especially in his first season. So I, I'm a little, personally, a little gutted about the whole Wan Bissaka situation because I thought he could have been United's right back for a while, um, but it, it just doesn't seem to have worked out in the end. I guess. Um, I think there's I, a lot I, of I really, issues with with Wan Bissaka. You know? Yeah, I, you I mean, know, like I know he got that driving ban, and there just seems to be I don't know. There's, you hear all these reports, don't you? That he's not. He's, I think he's struggling as well, the kid. So well, I've, I've heard he wants to, to go back. He wants to go back to London. Yeah. I'm sure we spoke about this last time I came on. You, I don't understand why people want to go, to, go down to London. To be honest, it's a shithole. But um, you, you know, I don't. Well. Have you ever thought of a job on the tallest board? Do you? You are on the job on the tallest board. I the London one. I, yeah, I think you could do just, just blunt, obvious. Go to London if you want, but it's a shithole. Yeah, well, do you know what I mean? I mean why do you want to go to Liverpool? It's full of scouts. I mean, I mean, well, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, why would you want to go to Liverpool <laughs> anyway? I mean, <laughs> if you want to come back <laughs> with a disease, and they should get you doing the um, doing the Eurovision uh, uh, tourism stuff. Uh, yeah, no, I used to live in London. It was all right. Bit busy. I prefer Manchester though. Uh, listen, the low could leave, and he could not. I think he's going to get his contracts extended. Get involved in the chat in the comments. Um, DB Cooper says, can producer Ethan play right back? We need a little Geordie Flair in our back line. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, OK, Marigold says, said, yeah. Aaron Wambasaka. He said he can. Yeah. Um, played like Bambi on ice. And yeah, but, but then Big G says, yes, lad. I like Aaron Wambasaka myself. He was good for that first season. I liked him. He just fell off a bit of a cliff. I love that. Yes, lad. Fair play. Um, right, someone agrees with me. Um, right, let's go on to uh, a goalkeeper. We've been linked with someone who, um, this is a name that I think has just been created to cause me dramas. This sounds Ulysses, like a regional effort on Football Manager, doesn't it, really? Ulysses Vlakamidos. Vlakamidos? Ulysses Vlakamidos. He was the... Vla uh, Vlakadimos. Vlakadimos. Ulysses Vlakadimos. Is that how you pronounce it? It sounds like a scouser, that. Really? Honestly, it sounds like... <sighs> just Ulysses Vlaka Vlakadimos. He sounds yeah. like, I think he sounds like, you know, the, the Greek president from the 30s or something. Um, United is reportedly stepping up their scouting of Greeks and what's this here? Bene what's this Bene Benefica. Benefica, eh? <laughs> Who wrote that? Hey, never mind can it produce even play right back. Can he spell? Benefica, <laughs> that's not a word. Hey? Um, to be fair, last time I pulled him up on something wrong, he was right, but that one isn't. Uh, number one, Vlakamidos. <laughs> United need a new goalkeeper by the summer of 2023 when David De Gea's contract comes to an end. Benfica, there you go. You got it right the second time. So there we go. Hey, one out of two is not bad, we'll say that. <laughs> um, I'm only joking. Um, we'll be, demand a fee close to 20 million euros. 20 million euros, just get him. May as well. To Do be you know fair. what I mean? I mean, who gives a shit? Twenty million euros. Hopefully, we'll learn how to say his name. We'll learn how to say his name by them as well. Vlakimidos. Vlako. Vlakodimos. Has the Hague not got a year-long trigger option and all that stuff? Yeah, like, but he's I think constantly it's weird, he's isn't constantly it? mentioning. I think about United have to, to want to do it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. True. But the thing is, isn't he on massive wages as well? So. Yeah, he's on like, I, he's on like money, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's on, like the most expensive goalkeeper in wages ever. I won't get out of bed for what he's on me. You wouldn't? Yeah, I won't get out of bed. I said double that at least for my for my honestly the earnings that I get to come on air, massive mate. You get money to come on air. Yeah, well, <laughs> we need to have a look at that. I'm only joking. Um, right. Um, yeah. Well, someone here, uh, big big G says, nah, I shouldn't go for this lad. Need to go for Lafon. Um, Jack Campbell. Do you know what? Jack Campbell says, Odysseus Shakademus. I was thinking that when I said it. I'm glad someone else picked up that. I thought that was just me and my 90s references. Uh, right, should we talk about Milinkovic Savage? Because, right, I have a theory. Yeah? Yeah, go on. Why do you say it like it's going to be stupid? Because, go on, right. say it. I think United 
have always been and will always be linked with Sergei Milinkovic Savage. I reckon they will. I'm I think this is just going to go on forever. I'm convinced this guy's not even. I don't Do even think he exists. exists. I think it's just a guy that the papers have made up just yeah. to send us all. Has anyone actually seen him? No, I mean, no, not no. really. Have you met him? I've no. I've never met him. I, I, I nearly saw him in uh, Eccles Morrison's once. I don't know if you did. And I'd say that time when I said I tweeted. You, I saw, seen, you saw Frankie De Jong there, didn't I seen, you? I said I've just seen Jim Radcliffe at Eccles Morrison's drawing money out of the ATM. Make it out what you will. Right, yeah, well. they take over it, right? <laughs> my missus messages me, Cal. She goes, is that true what you said about that Jim Ratcliffe guy? I said, no, I didn't really see Britain's richest man <laughs> drawing money out of the ATM at Morrison's in Eccles to buy Manchester United Football Club. And she went, when you put it like that. Yeah, when you put yeah. it like that, yeah. He, when you put it like that, I, you, you know. To I, be fair, I can he, understand he, that's a fucking amazing He usually thing, shops at the Aldi anyway down the road, doesn't does he? Does yeah, he? Yeah, he, he, he usually goes on. You know, I've heard as well, I've heard he shops. Puts his shop in his car and leaves his car in the car park for a few hours. Yeah, Might gets a massive fine, but he doesn't yeah, care. Doesn't care just he's got money. What's that? Thirty quid. Yeah, it's just why not? Mate, I've I'd do that. I was rich. That second. Yeah, I would. Um, yeah, Milinkovic Savic uh, is available for forty-four million, uh, according to reports. Uh, United have previously been linked with him. Fucking right, we have been linked with him forever. Um, having failed to sign Frankie De Jong, struggling Juventus are reportedly planning a move to sign a twenty-seven-year-old in the January transfer window. That is coming from La Gazzetta dello Sport. Do you like this guy? All joking aside, I know we we're messing about. Do this. you know? What, yeah, I know. I've said and I've seen. I have seen him a few times. He's, he, he seems a really good midfielder. He's really good at passing the ball, which helps if you're a midfield player, helps if you're a footballer to be fair. But um, I, uh, the thing is with him, every year that I see him, we're limited him for like 80, 90 million quid. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, a great midfielder, but because uh, I know there was a lot of talk of him being sort of the re replacement for Pogba, um, but 44 million pounds seems a bit of a steal for him, to be honest. I, 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 the only problem I'd say is January, there's no money in January, I'd be surprised if there's money next summer, to be honest. Obviously, we spoke about the Glazers before, but if that's what he's available for, he'd be a massive upgrade in midfield. Um, and obviously, I felt like what seemed like forever we were speaking about Frankie de Jong. I'm, I'm hoping that ship sailed and we don't kind of go back in for him. Um, I do like the idea that Frankie de Jong wanted to stay at Barcelona to play Champions League football and now the third in the group and might be playing Europa League football in February. I mean, stars align and all that, don't they? Uh, no, I'd love to have him. I think he's a great player. Uh, it'd be another upgrade in midfield. Um, but again, hopefully Ten Hag wants him. If he does, go for him. It seems like his targets that he's wanted so far have worked, especially with like Anthony and uh, the greatest Argentinian centre-back to ever play fo uh, association football in Martinez. So, don't know if you agree with that, mate. But, he's know. like Marcus Rojo, but he can cook toast. Yeah, oh, that toast That was toast shocking. was minging, wasn't it? Yeah. That left me emotionally scared. I was as scared as that bread. Um, <laughs> yeah, Malinkovic Savage, good player. I've heard loads about him from a lot of people. I know Bojan Djordic, um, who's a friend of the channel, he's played for United. Uh, he was absolutely raving about him. I feel like we've missed the boat with this one. I think it was not missed the boat, but I think it was going to happen, it would have happened in 2018. It, it would have happened when by he was now, I think. a youngster. Yeah. Now he's 27. Juve sniffing around him, I don't know. I don't think it's happened. Uh, someone's asked BG, how old is he? He's 27. Um, a few people in the chat. Uh, Matthew Sargent says, he'll go to Juve and I proper won't care. Josh Brown says, he is good. Um, right, let's, let's get to this story, right? This is just typical fucking United nonsense. Um, right. It's not like United, is it? I know. Fan attendance. Attendance glitch. Um, right, so this is, um, is that spelt right now or what? Glitch. Attendance. Attendance isn't, though. <laughs> is it's, it? It's A-N-C-E. Is A-N-C, isn't it? Attendance. Yeah. Attendance. Is I'm, it? I'm positive it is. Is it? No chance. Right, we're having a debate here with producer Ethan. It's me and Callum forget, think Forget the football. Forget it's this, definitely this is, A. Is attendance. Oh, right, who's right? You. I'm right. <laughs> Can we have that in writing, please? And Sorry. hopefully spelt right. Um, <laughs> fan attendance. <laughs> we love him really um, Furious United fans are having to prove they were at matches because of turnstile turnstile it glitch what's that mean <laughs> oh IT glitch right I, I'm, 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 <laughs> turnstile it glitch what's going on here uh, a turnstile IT glitch means the club league's fans <laughs> I'm losing the fucking plot here stayed away and could stop them renewing season ticket that's fucking great isn't it? you're at a game but they go oh well, actually we've had a glitch so we're, gonna, we're not going to renew your season ticket uh, this took a turn for the bizarre. This is in the Daily Mail. It's a season ticket holders have been left outraged after being told to provide a description of their clothing. 
and, um, and photographic ID so they can be identified on CCTV to prove they were at home matches the club claimed they did not attend. I mean, fucking hell. It's a good job this isn't a TV show. I'm still laughing at that turnstile it glitch. Turnstile it glitch? <laughs> What's a turnstile it? Oh, I see. Um, I mean, what were you wearing at the fucking, I don't know, Do you know the, what? the Brighton game? Oh, I, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you what Clothes, I'm wearing. Clothes, a hoodie. I, I couldn't even tell you what I'm wearing right now exactly. without looking down. Who the fuck remembers that? Yeah, I, I literally could not tell you what I wore now. Hon yeah. I'm wearing a t-shirt, a plain t-shirt, like, like, honestly. Someone rang, like, message you and go, right, can you tell us, what, what did you wear for the Liverpool game? Like, if I was, a, if I was a, like, a suspect in a really bad crime, I would have to say I don't know or no comment a lot, and they'd be like, "Are you guilty?" I'd be like, "No, I'm just fucking stupid, yeah, man." Because I want, I want. I mean, I did love a no comment interview anyway when I used to get next, but yeah, fair play. That you know, memory was shite, and it, it still would be. What what did you wear? Oh, there you go. We've had a message. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has as hey. well. Yeah, fair play, Ethan. Manchester United's future right right back, the, the Geordie legend that is Ethan James. Hey, he's fixed the glitch, <laughs> the IT glitch. He's fixed it. There you go, you see? That's how we roll at Stratford Paddock. We get things done. Maybe not straight away, but eventually. And that's what counts. <laughs> um, Vince Ma Vic Machin says, what were you wearing? A Manchester United t-shirt box. This is the thing, most of us don't even wear colours or anything. Do you know what I mean? I don't take photos of myself at a game in the TRA. So there's none of that. So I don't know. I'm not going to have any evidence. What were you gonna, wearing? Well, we're not allowed pictures in a TRA, really. So, uh, so I, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even use evidence of what I, what I had on. Imagine like, you get that phone call, the email, saying what you were to fuck off. I don't know. I could tell, I could tell them what pie I bought at half-time. Like, maybe the United pie, steak and cheese is all right. Did, that did I like that. It's nice. Really? It's a good pie, that. Don't like the chilli bit, so I have to pick them out. A bit too spicy. Can't do spice. Can you not? It's not for me, that. No, I'm, not, I'm not into spice. Lemon and Herbert Nando's, chicken yeah. korma at the curry house, and right. mayonnaise in a fucking... United pie from United. I can't, can't play it, so. mate. No, yeah. not not. A big I tell, yeah, I can tell them what pie and what what beer I bought, but other than that, no chance. I wore jeans, mate. I couldn't tell you. That's this it. is just fucking nonsense. It's isn't typical it? United. Honestly, this whole idea of United, they treat the fans like shit, really, don't they? Our club. You know, the stadium's always full. There's so many people. You know, without naming names, I'm sure, but. There's so many people that go to the games and they help other people go to games, whether it be for free or, you know, the tickets are paid for. If I buy a season ticket, it's absolutely up to me what I do with it. If I want to buy a season ticket for 19 league games and give it away to someone for free every single week, it should be my prerogative to do that. Like, yeah. if, if I go to Primark and I buy a T-shirt from there, they're not going to tell me if I'm wearing it or if I'm giving it to someone else to no. wear. So why do United feel like it's our ticket that we pay money for? So why do they feel like it matters to them? Why should it matter to them where the ticket goes and who goes to the game? It's fucking pathetic. It's genuinely pathetic. So the fact that they're still doing it, and I hate that, and people are getting, I keep seeing it on Twitter and Facebook and everything, people are being banned from games, people are being cautioned, people are being whatever. It, it's, it's a disgrace, really, how they're treating the fans at the minute, especially with everything going on at, at the club, with, you know, off the pitch, and how poor we've been for so long, and you know, the, the, the things with the owners and, and everything like that. The fact that fans are still being treated the way they are, it's the same with the, going against it as well, with obviously with the Met Police cutting the allocation at Chelsea. Like, fans are just treated like dirt, but speaking as a Man United fan, United fans are treated like utter shit by their own club just because they want to help other people go to the games because it's not the name on the ticket. It doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. And the fact that they're still doing it now, after all these years, just shows that they still could not give a shit about the fans and that they're so out of touch with the fan base, just like they are on Twitter every week. It's... I don't know how you feel about it, mate, but I'm, I'm a bit on the fence about it, to be honest. Yeah, I wish you'd share your opinion, to be honest with you. Now, do you know what it is? Like, they don't like season ticket holders at United, the club. Because oh, yeah. that, that, that you, 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 you don't spend money in the club. You don't, you know, you know what I mean, sit down and polite, politely clap. A lot of you slag off the Glazers, don't spend the sort of money that that seat is worth more to them on day tripping United fans. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, if that's your sort of thing you're into, I'm, no. not, having a dig at, I'm not having a dig at those, those, those fans. What I'm saying is, you know, we spoke to Kieran McGuire and people, and he's saying, listen, the club don't treat season ticket holders that well because you're getting your ticket cheaper than it would if it was sold individually. You're not spending money in a club shop. You're not most of the time you're not spending as much money on the concourse as other fans would. So they'd rather you weren't there. And I think sometimes that's why they treat you so badly in this whole fucking nonsense. If they've got an IT glitch, 
they can fucking sort it out or and find glitch. out or an it glitch and find out what we're doing. Uh, hit that like button and make sure you are subscribing to the channel as well. Uh, big thanks to Callum Stone. Where can people find you, Mr. Stone? You can find me at underscore Callum Stone on Twitter, usually moaning about the Tories or Man United. So I'm not moaning that much about United, anyway, actually. Um, or I'm on Off United sometimes if you want to check out their YouTube channel or when I start writing again. I said actually last time I was on air I was going to start writing. You know how many articles I've wrote since? Zero. The Fuck same up. number of Premier League titles Steven Gerrard's won. Yeah, the exactly. same number of Champions League trophies Arsenal and City have combined. Exactly. So See? I've not wrote anything, but if you want to check it out, you can but do it. It's all it's up not here. Great, though, Generating so. ideas. Yeah, exactly. It's a process writing. I wish, just... I, wish, I wish I could say that, but well, yeah, I am. Yeah. I've got loads of ideas. I just can't be asked writing them down, if I'm honest. Right. So, so if you want to check that out, feel free. But usually most of the stuff I do is on Twitter, unless you want to find me on Facebook and harass me on that. But please don't do that. Um, I, never, I think that's a. I think that's a first that someone saying find me on Facebook on it. No, don't find me on yeah. Facebook. Yeah, well, I'm not. Please don't find me on Facebook. Do you know what I hate when I go on Facebook? I fucking hate this. So now I'm gonna go on Facebook, right? Because I get tagged in stuff. Misses are tagged me pictures of the kids, right? And then you go on there, and there's all these list of fucking birthdays in there. Yeah. Of people. So then you've got to write happy birthday and then copy and paste it for everyone. And I just think, wow, it's fucking nuts. Awesome. I don't do that, mate. Uh, it depends who it is. If it's like my cousin or something, like I nearly forgot to say happy birthday to my cousin the other day, so sorry, Lauren, if you're watching. No. But, um, yeah, the, the thing that's doing my head in on Facebook, and for all everyone, all the fans of everywhere across England and all around the world, you're not going to get this, but Ernst and M41ers drives me mental. Oh, no. It's the, it's, the, it's the greatest page in the world, but some of the people on there are lunatics. Like, I don't know if you ever noticed, but the mile road's open and there's no fucking shoe shop in Ernst and so... But... I love all... You know what? I actually do love some of those pages, though. Because yeah, it all well... pops off. We've got one for our estate in Eccles, and, like, it all kicks off. I remember when we used to live in Erlen, there was like people posting on the Earlham neighbourhood watch thing, whatever it was. And it'd be like, oh, there's a load of lads near the train station giving shit to people. They look like right chavs, be careful. And then you'd have someone pipe up and go, they're not fucking chavs, they're my son and his mates, you cheeky bitch. <laughs> and all that. It was fucking great, it was right. Get the popcorn out, it was all right, little soap. I love that. You still love that. To be fair though, what do me heading on Facebook in a minute, and to make it a little bit about United. Uh, there's a few United pages, obviously, for various tickets and, you know, because nobody sells tickets on there. Um, but I'm sick of watching the, the United games on the TV at the minute and the tiniest mistake will happen from one of the players. Get him out, get him out of our club now. See, I told you that's why he's not good enough. Oh, fucking hell, Jesus, he didn't even do anything wrong there. Chill out, will you? And then five minutes later, he scores and then they delete the post. Fucking own it, you're a moron. Own it. Own it, you're a complete idiot. Well said. Own it, you're a complete idiot, says Callum Stone. Well said, my friend. I'm just friend. trying to keep it PG. Yeah. I've passed time. You did well, you censored yeah. yourself, I'm proud of you. Uh, make sure you go and check him out everywhere, except Facebook and all for United as well. Check out their channel. You know where to find me. You can find me on here. You can find me on Scotty and Motty. Check out all that jazz. Don't forget as well to hit like, share and subscribe. It's going to be Joe Smith in the morning. Oh, no, it's not going to be Joe Smith in the morning because it's a fucking match tomorrow, isn't it? I'm talking utter shite. It's going to be Joe Smith tomorrow with your watch along. So we're going to have the watch along for tomorrow evening when United take on the mighty Ammonia. There's also the preview that's already up, so go and check out that. Make sure you go and visit Bet Victor and Last Fan Standing. There's a link in the description. Say that we sent you. Say that Stratford Paddock sent you. This has been Paddock Live. That's been Callum. I've been Jay. Thanks for watching.